Good morning. Here I am on the shores of the Connecticut River in Northfield, Massachusetts. I'm actually at the base of Northfield Mountain. The Connecticut River is the longest river in New England. It's 410 miles starting in the Connecticut Lakes, just about 100 yards south of the Canadian border. And then it goes all down the entire length of New Hampshire, Vermont, crosses Massachusetts, crosses Connecticut, all the way down to Long Island Sound. And in fact, the word Connecticut means long river. Today, I'm only gonna paddle 5.3 miles. I'm gonna paddle with my canoe from where I am right now, Northfield Mountain, and I'm gonna go down to Barton Cove. Um, this is a very scenic section of the river, very pretty, with a lot of interesting sights, um, including bald eagles. So I'm really excited to be here today. It's a beautiful early September morning. There isn't a cloud in the sky, and um, I can't think of any place I'd rather be. All right, so for this section of the river, the power company has established two really easy put-in and take-out spots. So today we're putting in here in Northfield, again at the base of Northfield Mountain. We're right off of Route 63 in Northfield, Massachusetts. And so there's a great parking area right up above where we're parked. There's a beautiful picnic area here where you can come down and sort of enjoy the river, even if you're not canoeing. But there's a, it's very easy. We have a boat ramp down here. So I'm going to grab my canoe and carry it down to the boat ramp and put it into the river. When I'm paddling solo by myself in the canoe, I like to use a kayak paddle, um, especially when I'm on something big and wide like this. So if I'm on a lake, or in this case a very wide river where there's no rapids, is I really prefer to use the kayak paddle. The kayak paddle enables me to every single stroke moving forward, it gives me a lot of power, it's very efficient, it's uh, the, kind of like the next best equivalent to having two paddlers in the canoe. Uh, one thing if you use a kayak paddle in a canoe, you want to make sure it's longer because when you're in a kayak, of course, you're sitting down closer to the surface of the water. And here in the canoe, I've got the sides of the boats and the gunnels coming up, so you need a slightly longer kayak paddle. Um, but I really, it's like being in four-wheel drive in the canoe. This is really, I prefer it, so. That's why I have it today. So what we're looking at over there behind the orange buoys, those buoys are there to keep boats away from that structure you can see behind the buoys. And that, that structure is the bottom of a large intake channel or intake canal, whatever you want to call it. And what it is, is it's actually a tunnel that is underground and goes through Northfield Mountain all the way to the top of Northfield Mountain where they have excavated at the summit of the mountain a large reservoir. And so what the utility company does is during the night, at nighttime, is they pump water from the Connecticut River up that intake canal, in, intake tunnel, and it fills the reservoir at the top of the mountain. Then during the day, when electric demand is higher is they release the water up at the top of the reservoir and it goes down through that tunnel that it came up and when it goes down through that tunnel it turns turbines and because it's coming down from height it's coming fast and has a lot of force it generates a lot of electric power so it's actually a hydro power system and it's kind of unique to me because they're pumping water from the river up to the top of a mountain and then they're generating power as it comes down. So um, very kind of a unique, unique um, engineering feat really. But anyway, so the Connecticut River, in addition to being um, a source for beauty and wildlife and recreation, is also a major source of hydroelectricity in New England. So the thing that's interesting about the Connecticut River, or one of the many things, is that this river is actually flowing in a long seam that is here because the, of the collision of two continental plates. So the left-hand side of the river, as I look downstream right now, is eastern Massachusetts, eastern New England, and that whole side of the river, way back in prehistory, was part of the African continent, and so that 
section broke away from the African continent millions of years ago, moved across the Atlantic, and then collided with the North American plate right here. And so these, this, uh, the river is following in that seam between those two continental plates. So as I look downstream right here, the eastern side of the river, eastern Massachusetts, was once a part, once a part of Africa. And the right-hand side of the river, as we look down, was once, has always been North America. And so the rocks on the two sides of the river are very, very different. On the left side, we have a lot of granite and uh, granitic rocks. And over here on the right side, we see more slates and shales and sandstones and a much more diverse um, selection of stones. Very interesting. We're actually in a, a seam between two former continents. So here we are, I've been paddling. I've been paddling on the Connecticut River now for about four miles. It's been a beautiful paddle so far. I've had a nice kind of gentle current, a lot of sunshine. Um, right now, there's no current. And the reason for that is that the river here is backed up by the dam at Turner's Falls. And so this section of the river, they actually call Barton Cove. And they have a state boat ramp and motorboats come in here. It's more like a lake, even though it's a part of the river. But the thing that's really unique here that I'm heading to right now is there is an island here in Barton Cove. And what's unique about this island is that it is home to a pair of bald eagles. So we have a pair of bald eagles that have been nesting out here, I think for about 27 years. Um, they actually had a large nest that they had been using for about 20 years, maybe 25. And it blew down a few years ago and they move their nest into the woods on this larger island. So I'm kind of creeping up onto the island right now um, in the hopes, I know where the nest is. Actually, I can see the nest right now. And I'm hoping that the eagles may be there. Um, I do know that they had maybe three or four eggs this spring. And so that means they probably have some young eaglets um, that are probably flying by now. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna come up here and see if we can actually see the nest and maybe see the eagles themselves. Here's a bald eagle. I saw the bald eagles fly around the bend, so I'm hoping to get a better view of them. 
All right, so this island is really great. I, the leaves right now are so thick, we real I couldn't get a really good shot of the uh, the eagle nest. But out here, we do have a lot of wildlife. We have some trumpeter swans. We have some uh, mallard ducks. We've got a huge gaggle of Canada geese over here. All these geese getting ready to migrate south for the winter. All right, well here I am at Unity Park, the town of Montague at Turner's Falls, Massachusetts. Five miles down the Connecticut River from where I started in Northfield, Massachusetts. And so uh, along the way, uh, you know, talked about the geology, saw the island where the eagles are nesting, and actually did see three eagles today, uh, though I was only able to kind of capture one on camera. Um, but we did see the swans, we saw the geese, we saw the ducks. And so what's um, right here, you've got to take out here. It's a perfect spot to park, great place to pull the boat out. You have to take it out here because the, the big red boom you can see behind me here is the warning because we are right above the dam at Turner's Falls. And so this is a big hydro dam and um, you don't want to go over it. Um, but the reason the eagles nest here on this lake is because the fish coming upstream get stopped by the dam. And so there's a fish ladder, so the fish kind of conjugate there. So the eagles take advantage and use it as a fishing spot, just like everybody else is. But anyway, this is a great, easy kind of half day canoeing trip um, suitable, suitable at almost any time of the year there's always enough water very easy to do and you see the wildlife so I really had a great day and I'm glad you're able to come along with us all right well I put my canoe back on my car ready to head home but I wanted to come down here to look at the dam at Turner's Falls so right behind me here you can see the dam that's holding back the mighty Connecticut River, this, the biggest river in New England, is all being held by, back by this dam right here for the purpose of generating uh, hydroelectricity. On my side here, this big concrete structure, is this is the fish ladder. So when the fish are migrating in the spring, the shad and even the sturgeon, when they're migrating in the spring, they come up the river here. This is where the eagles hunt. And the fish have to navigate up this fish ladder to get up above the dam. But where I'm standing right now, below the dam here, this is a, one of the best parts of the Connecticut River to canoe in Massachusetts because it's really a paddler's paradise. This section of the river, below where I'm standing right now, is known as Reach 1, and Reach 1 has a speed limit, specifically so that kayakers and canoers aren't caught in the wakes of the, the big motorboats. So from Turner's Falls here down to Sunderland, Mass, is reach one which is um, speed limit control. Beautiful stretch of river to paddle. The leaves are gonna be changing soon. I'm gonna to have to try to get out here maybe three or four weeks and paddle that. So when I do, um, I'll be sure to bring you along. Till next time, this is Bob Tremblay.